Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create what I'm calling cubic typographic text inside of GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.22 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP, Inkscape, and Darktable tutorials on here. You can also get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And as I mentioned, you can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using this free font, Montserrat from Google. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to how to download and install fonts specifically from Google Fonts. I'll link that to this video. So here is the final composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial. As you can see, the text curves around the edges here of this cube and also goes off in various directions, and it has some shading here. I actually have a template available here for DMD Premium subscribers that just goes over how the layers are related to the position on the cube, and you'll see what these labels mean a little bit later on in this tutorial. And you can see that each one of these counts from one to five. And I have directional arrows so you guys can see what direction these layers are placed on the final cube. So here is one example of a rendering I did. And you can see how layer 1, 3, and 5 are shown here and which direction they're facing. But don't worry, I will cover each of the steps for this tutorial. So I'm not going to skip anything. It should be super easy. Let's dive right in. So I'm going to start by closing out this tab just because it will get a little bit cluttered as we use the tool to create our cube. So it's better to have less compositions open here. But I'll go to File, New, and I'm going to create a new document. So I'm going to go 1000 by 1000. So that's going to give us a square. And because my background color was set to black, our background color here is now black. You can always click and drag the black onto that and that'll change the background color. Next, what I want to do is I want to type my text in here. So I'll come over and grab the text tool from my toolbox. And I have my font here set to Montserrat Bold. You can manually type whatever font you want to use here and it will come up. Just hit the tab key. Or you can click on here and cycle through the fonts. You can also click this icon and scroll through the fonts here in the fonts dialog. And I'm also going to come over and change the size to 75 and make sure the color here is set to white. And right now you'll see that the spacing between lines, the line spacing is minus 30. So I'm going to come over to my composition, click on here, and with the caps lock key on, I'm going to type my text. All right, so here is my text. This is way too small right now, so I'll hit Control A to select all the text. And now I can come up here and just increase this until it basically fills up the entire space. And if I hold the Alt key, I can move my text, so I'm going to move this over and see if that fits. So right now it's a bit too big. So let's go down to 115. So once this is positioned where we want it, I can come over here and grab my move tool from the toolbox. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this text in the place where it's going to basically bend around the corner of the cube. So what I've been doing is I've been slicing it right at the eye here. To do that, I'm going to come over and grab my rectangle select tool. And I'm just going to draw this first randomly and that was actually pretty close. So you can see I went all the way outside the text box and I'm going to just adjust this so maybe it's a little bit better aligned with that eye. You guys can slice this wherever you want. Just make sure that your text does not go outside of the boundary. You can see my text box goes outside of my composition boundary but not the text itself. That is important because your text will get cut off there. But making sure you are on that text layer. You're going to hit Control X to copy that, or to cut that I should say, and you'll see that now that whole right side of the text will disappear. And I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that selection area. Then I'll go to Edit, Paste in Place. So that'll paste that exactly where we cut it from originally, but it will place it as a floating selection or a pasted layer. So now I'll come over and just add that to its own new layer. And now you can see that these two areas of the text are now on separate layers. 
And I already know from playing around with this tool how the various layers in my composition are gonna line up to the sides in the cube. So that gives me an idea of how I need to place the text here. In this case, because I'm having this side of the text line up with obviously this side, the left side of this portion of the text around the corner. I'm gonna need these at opposite ends of our square here. And you'll see why once we get into generating the actual cube. But I'll come over here to my toolbox and I'm going to grab the alignment tool. And on this pasted layer now, which is going to be the right side of our text, I'm gonna click on this once. So now that's selected by the alignment tool, I'm gonna set this relative to image and I'm going to left align this. So now that's aligned to the left side of the image and let's just hide that temporarily here. So let's come down here to the second part of the text, the left side of the text. First thing I want to do here is go to layer, crop to content. So that'll crop the layer size down. So now the right side of the layer is aligned here with the right side of where the text is cut off. Then I'm going to click on this layer. And you can always tell a layer is selected by the alignment tool because it has these little boxes in the corner. Now I'll come over here and I'm going to align relative to the image to the right side. And now if I come back over here and unhide this, you'll see now the left portion of our text is on the right side and the right portion is on the left side. However, one thing I wanna point out here is if you want these to be aligned like this where they come pretty close to each other in terms of the edges of the cube, you're going to want to come over here and take out the gap here at the bottom. So this is still set up with the alignment tool. So I can come over here and just align this to the bottom. And if I come back over here to this layer, click on it, I can also align that one to the bottom. And I am going to have to crop this to the content first. So layer, crop to content. And now let's try that again. We'll click on this and now we'll align that to the bottom. So we are missing one line of text. I'm going to add that text now. So I'm gonna come over, grab my text tool again. We'll have all the settings set to the same. And actually, I remember I did change this. So I'll go with 115 here. These don't all three have to be the same setting. So let me click on here now. And now I'm gonna type by Davies, hit the enter key, media design. So now I'll come over here, grab my move tool. And I'm gonna hit shift R on my keyboard. That's gonna grab the rotate tool. And now I'm just gonna click and if I hold the shift key, it'll rotate this in 15 degree increments. So that's gonna rotate this to negative 90 degrees. And now I'll come over here and click rotate. And again, just based on playing with this, I know that this needs to be over here in the bottom left corner in order for it to show up like this. So let's come back over here, hit the Q key on my keyboard to grab the alignment tool. And now I'm gonna click on this layer and I'm just going to left align it to the image and then align it to the bottom. If you want there to be even less of a gap than you see here, you can always crop this layer to the text inside of it. So layer, crop to content, and then align it. But in this case, I actually like the little bit of spacing, so I'm gonna leave it there. So there's just a few more simple steps before we get into mapping the layers to the sides of the cube. So for starters, I need to hide the background layer. And then what I'm gonna do is come over here and create a new layer. This one I will name blank and I'll fill this with transparency and click OK. We will be using this blank layer for multiple sides of the cube. And then finally what I need to do is I need to make the size of these layers the full size of the composition. Right now they're pretty small. So what I'll do is go to layer, layer to image size. And I'm gonna do that for the other text layer. So layer, layer to image size. And finally layer, layer to image size. The last thing I'll do is I'll label each of these layers so I know where they go inside of the cube. And I only know where they go because I played around with this earlier. But again, you guys can check out my premium template if you are a DMD premium member and that'll save you a ton of time. But I know the layer order for me is gonna be back, right, and bottom. And so let me come over here and change this to back, right, and bottom. And you'll see why I'm labeling these the way I am in a moment. So now that all that is done, I'm gonna hit the forward slash key on my keyboard or go to help, search and run a command. And then I'm gonna type map. And what we're looking for is the map object feature. So I'll double click on that. This is gonna look a little bit messed up at first because the sides are not properly mapped. But what you need to know is that map two needs to be set to box. 
I recommend having transparent background, otherwise it'll fill this in with whatever background color you have currently selected. And I recommend either create new image if you want this to open up as a brand new composition once it's rendered, that just takes a bit more time, or create a new layer to place this on a brand new layer. I don't recommend having both of these unchecked because then it'll place the cube on whatever your active layer is. So I like to go with create new layer. Anti-aliasing, if this is turned all the way up, it is going to make your lettering look smoother supposedly, but it will take up a bit more performance on your computer. So if you have a slow computer, I don't recommend turning this up probably above three or so. And I like to have the update preview live option checked. That way we get a live look at what's going on here. But the first area I'll go to is this box area. So here you can see why I labeled these things the way I did. So you have back, right, and bottom. And you can see here we have back, bottom, and right. So let's assign these to their corresponding layers. So let's find the layer labeled right. And this is why I closed out those other compositions because everything will show up in here. But we have this one set to right. And we don't have a left. So if we don't have that one, we're gonna set it to the blank layer. We do have a bottom layer, so we'll set that to the bottom layer. And you can see right now all of them are set to bottom. That's why we have to go through and set these manually. This one will set to blank because we don't have a top. We do have a back layer, so I'm gonna set this to back. And the front layer we do not have, so we're gonna set that to blank. My template does have the labels for layers from bottom to top, so definitely check that out. But now I'll come over and click preview. So there you can see everything is aligned properly, but it's not really positioned so that we can see everything the way we wanna see it. So what I'll do to fix that is come over here to this tab, orientation. And here you'll see we have several sliders. So what we're looking for first is the rotation slider. So what I'm gonna do is just click and drag this with my mouse. And so the X slider is not what we need right now. Neither really is the Y. So the Z is gonna bring this back into focus. It's gonna straighten it out a bit. We still want this to be sort of tilted a bit there. And then once we get the Z in a better position, we can mess around with the other sliders here. So this slider here is basically gonna zoom it in or out. This one is gonna bring it up or down, and this one will bring it left or right. And if I set these to 0.5, it's basically going to set these at the exact middle points. So that's what I like to do for X and Y. We'll leave Z where it is for now. All right, so eventually you'll get this to a place that you like. So these are my settings I decided to go with here. And if you don't get a preview generated in real time, just hit the preview button there. But once you have everything positioned, Come over here and you can mess around with the light and material settings. So the light setting itself allows you to change the position of the light. So let me hit this little minus sign and you can see right now my light is positioned out here. I can move this around and it won't actually render the new light until you actually release it. So every time you move the light you do have to click and then release. And you can see what that's doing there to the shading here in the lettering. The unfortunate thing about this is you can only zoom in this much. So you can't really get a full picture of what's going on with the lighting. But you can still play around with this. And of course, if you move it further away, the lighting gets dimmer, uh, especially at the bottom there. So you can change the type of light here. So it's point light by default, but you have directional light and then no light. And you can also come over here and manually adjust the exact position of the light and of course change the color, although this really only works when you're using lighter colors. But if you want to change how the light is interacting with this further, so let me just zoom in a bit more, you can always come over here to material and play around with the intensity levels and the reflectivity. So this is just changing basically how intense the light is on the various aspects of this. So here you'll see the ambient light is going to make this lighter if you turn it up more, or if you want less ambient light, it'll make it darker. And then diffuse is going to determine basically how much spillage of the light is going to occur. And then below that you have reflectivity, so diffuse, specular, and highlight. So you guys can play around with those settings until you get the look you like. So once we're ready to apply our changes, I can come over here and click OK. 
Here you'll see our cubic typography, and this is a pretty harsh lighting setup, so that's why you have such a drastic difference between the various parts of our text. But let's say I wanted to put this on its own background. I can go to File, New, and let's make this 1920 by, let's go 1080, click OK. We'll keep this black background, and when I click and drag this over here to the black background, you can see the result of that. Shift S on the keyboard, I can always scale this up and click scale. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.